Welcome to Discovering, a look at mountain bikes and some tips on how to ride. Find the bike that you like, that fits you, and you will ride. That is the perfect bike. And Kids in the Outdoors. We'll check out Kids Shooting Day and Kids Fishing Day. Stick around, it's Monday night and time for the Upper Peninsula's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land, there is so much to discover. When you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan I was in Delta County at the Days River Pathway Trail System where I met up with mountain bike skills coach Lynn Wolf to talk a bit about bikes along with some tips that might help you ride better and maybe get you started in the sport of mountain biking. So I am a level one skills coach for mountain biking and I am here doing a all women's half day mountain bike clinic. So I would really recommend that if you haven't mountain biked, consider mountain biking, consider taking a workshop, maybe an all weekend course or meeting with a private coach and get yourself out into the woods, be part of nature. We don't have to be fast. We don't have to be incredibly slow. We wanna be confident and enjoy what is out there and what's offered. The Upper Peninsula has some of the best mountain biking in the country. Whether you go to Marquette, Copper Harbor, and there's a lot of hidden places like Swede Town, or you can go below the bridge and start riding. We have a lot of beginner user-friendly trails called uh, Boyne Forest Trail System in the area just below the bridge. Marquette puts on a trail set festival twice a year and one of the emphasis is getting more women riding. Right now, uh, enduro competition, only 10% of the riders are women and we're trying to get more women involved. Not that you have to be ultra competitive, but let's build and increase that sense of community. So now let's get into the bike itself. This is what is referred to as a full suspension mountain bike. What that means is the front fork has suspension to it and you can see we call this travel, how much the fork can go up and down. And in the case of this bike to the rear, we have another shock. And quite often you will find a mountain bike that does not have this rear shock, but it has the front fork. And we refer to that as a hard tail. You can still ride one of those. Some people are under the impression that without a rear suspension, you cannot ride. That's not true. Uh, on this bike, I have a button and I can push the seat down and we refer to this as a dropper post. Part of what everyone is gonna to learn today is how to lower their body weight and lower their center of gravity to keep both tires creating a base of support. So there's some of the big things. Uh, this bike also is referred to as a one by and I'll let me flip it around for you. That means I only have one sprocket in the front but then I have 12 in the rear. And this is quite nice because as riders, we don't wanna to have to worry about shifting more than need be. So we keep the shifting all to the rear and we don't have to worry about the front. You may notice also that the tires have knobs on them. So in a mountain bike, we have a variety of tires that we can utilize. Mine happen to be a little bit more knobby. Uh, I ride on the rocks quite often. And if you notice, they will say that a mountain bike tire is wider. This is much wider. It's not a true fat tire bike, but it is what's called a 27.5. 
plus. And you're asking me, what is a 27.5? That is the diameter of the wheel. Originally, we rode on 26 inch tires. Then we went to 29ers. And then the industry realized that there are people short, like myself, who a 29 inch tire was too big, but a 27 would be perfect. The group today is going to learn how to be in a rider ready position as we call it. So soft knees, soft elbows, and whether we are sitting on the seat or we are out of the saddle as we call it, proper hand position is key here. We're going to be teaching what we call covering the brakes. So only one finger on the brakes at all time, and that gives us plenty of power and we leave three fingers to control our handlebars. We're also going to put a lot of focus on how to look ahead in the trail. We never want to look exactly in front of us. We want to look beyond where we're going to go. Once we've perfected that art, then we're going to take it and learn about bike body separation. So the ability to move the bike forward or my body forward and the bike back, the bike going side to side, and the ability to leave room when the seat is down and we're standing for the bike to move up and down underneath us. So quite often when you see riders, you think that they're moving all over. They're really quite stable. It's the bike that they're allowing to move underneath them. So whether it be forward, back, side to side, or up and down. Other things that we're gonna learn today is how to properly brake. So we wanna do what's called brake modulation pulling the brake in easy and not doing it quick and fast. Although there are times that we want to do that and learning to use both brakes. We are under the impression we should only use our rear brake, but our front brake is what gives us the power to actually stop the bike from moving. We're going to perfect the art of shifting so that we are kind to our chains. We've heard this idea of please don't shift under load because it puts tension on the brake. So what I'm going to do, put a little pressure on my pedal. Notice that there is no movement to the chain. That's a very tense chain and you're going to snap it if you try to shift right now. When I relieve the tension, notice the chain has mobility up and down and forward and back. This is while pedaling when we want to shift. Let's go into more detail of a dropper post. When should the seat be up and when should the seat be down? Right now it's up. Barb is looking ahead. Her elbows are soft and she is able to pedal through the trails with ease. Maybe she's come to an area where it's very rooty, rocky, or she needs to go down a deep descent. So she's gonna push the button, use her behind to push the seat down, leave the button, and now she's in her rider ready position. She can be in a tall rider, lifting her body a little higher to see where she's gonna go, and then drop down into what we call a low rider ready position. All right, let's talk pedals for a brief moment. I have what we call flat pedals on there. There's a little bit of a peg, which helps to anchor my shoes down and gives it a little bit more traction. You also see people ride what's called a clipless pedal. Sounds backwards because your shoe clips into the pedal and holds you in position. Both of them are acceptable for riding. You do what is most comfortable to you. The flip side is if you go to a flat pedal, you will learn how to better manage your weight and use that base of support when you're riding versus being clipped in and potentially cheating, but having more pull power as you go up hills. Keep in mind, bikes have changed. So how we ride has changed. The ability to drop a seat down and get it out of our way, the fact that we've increased the size of the tires, we have simplified the ability to shift, and we've actually improved our ability to brake changes how we ride. I really emphasize, even if you've been riding for 20 years, if you're getting a newer bike, go to a workshop or work with a skills coach and learn how to ride your new bike and be most efficient on it.
One of the comments that's always put out there is what is the ideal bike to ride? Is it a full suspension? Is it a hard tail? Do I need a thousand dollar bike or do I need an eight thousand dollar bike? What you need is the bike that you're going to ride. The one that fits you, maybe you should go to a bike shop and get properly fitted, but find the bike that you like that fits you and you will ride. That is the perfect bike. <music> right underneath it. Yeah. I stopped in at the Great Lakes Sports and Recreation Club in Escanaba to check out their first youth shooting program of the year. The start of our summer, seven week summer youth shooting program. Uh, kids can come out, they can shoot archery, they can shoot 22 rifle, they can shoot shotgun, they can shoot any one of them, all three of them if the time's permitting. Uh, it runs for seven weeks. We do skip to Saturday by the 4th of July. Safety is our really our main concern out here, teaching the kids how to operate guns safely, how to handle them safely. It also has a safety right here, and uh, when you see the red, that means the gun is live and can shoot. No red means the gun is safe. So we always want to work on safety first. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Try and fill them in a little bit on what not to do with them and what to do with them. And they'll put a shell in the gun for the kid and make sure that they close it. They'll teach them how to close the gun and stuff so they know how to do that, but they'll keep the shell until the kids are ready to shoot. And 22 rifle, pretty much the same. We have clips in there, they load up a clip and put in, and, and uh, they keep the kids, make sure they keep the gun pointed down range and everything. And the kids, they just stand on the line and we try and make sure that they keep the gun pointed down range even though it's empty and open. We want it to keep pointed down range or towards the ground. The coaches, we have one-on-one -on -one coaches on, on the 22 on the shotgun range. We have a coach who kind of works with three or four kids out there on the archery, but the one kid shoots at a time and they, uh, the coach is right there, right with them to keep everything safe and, and help the kid out if they need any problems. If the kids are handicapped, we work with them however we can. If we have an adult that comes out handicapped and wants to shoot, we'll let them shoot along with it. Or some of the women will try and encourage them to take a couple of shots here and there if they come out with the kids and stuff, just uh, to get to see what it's like, you know. The kids can bring out their own equipment if they want. If they do, we have to do a safety check on it to make sure it's good. Uh, otherwise, we have all uh, all the equipment here that they need. We got lots and lots of bows. We got several shotguns, 22 rifles. Uh, some of our shotguns are really, really nice shotguns. They're the Benelli's. Uh, great for the kids. Most of them are 20 gauge and 12 gauge. So there's not a lot of as much kick with the automatics and with the uh, 20 gauges. So hopefully the kids can come out and enjoy and everybody's welcome. But the lunch at the end will be for everybody, the volunteers, the workers, the kids and the parents and whoever comes out. So Members of the club can come out and use the rifle range at any time. Once they're a member, they get a combination to the gate. They can come out and shoot any kind of rifle they want. We do ask that they do not use any armor piercing or steel jacketed ammo on the range back there. A uh, shotgun is pretty much on Wednesday and Sundays. Once in a while, there'll be a special event on Saturday or something. And archery, that's pretty much whenever the club is open. They can shoot indoors, the outdoor range is there. We got the 3D archery targets outside there. The kids like to shoot at the deer and the turkeys. And a couple of years ago, some of the kids wanted a dinosaur, so we got a dinosaur even for them to shoot at. So it's just a good time to, for the adults to spend with the kids. You know, mother, dad, and kids that uh, having a good time out at the club here or something, you know. We hope they have a good time anyway. Then we have National Hunting and Fishing Day in September. All kinds of stuff out here. Then we'll have the fishing boat out here, or fishing pond, I mean. And we'll have a fur display. The four-wheelers are out here to do a display and, and uh, teach the kids about safety. 
again, the shotgun archery, 22s are open. Kids can shoot on that. And we have prizes for everybody. We get prizes. Some of the really nice, probably five, $6,000 were the prizes for that event. The last week here on our summer event, we generally have a, a bigger event and we had give out some prizes and stuff there too. So. The DNR Pocket Park is located at the fairgrounds in Escanaba and this year it was host to the annual Kids Fishing Day event. The Pocket Park opened in 1999 so it's been a while. It's a one acre park um, within the um, UP State Fairgrounds property and we're open um, during the summer months, um, usually during the week and um, for activities it's free to enter. People in the community think that we're only open during fair week. Nobody knows we're open all summer long. So come on out, enjoy the grounds, catch fish, use the pellet range, the archery range, or just come here and have lunch one day. It's available for everyone to enjoy. We have groups that utilize the park as far as school groups, school events, uh, Camp 911, Camp Skeeter, um, and today we have the Kids Fishing Day um, organization that is putting on this wonderful um, event for kids on uh, Free Fishing Day. We're here at the DNR Pocket Park today. Uh, we have a bunch of volunteers from the DNR and the Forest Service. Uh, we have kids fishing today. Uh, there's about 300 bluegill that's stocked uh, through the local fishing club and our fisheries department. So I was fishing and then I tilted my, my papa helped me um, help me fish for my first time here. So we're here at the Pocket Park just to get the kids out and uh, get them involved in fishing as much as we can. The local fishing club here is uh, handing out raffle prizes and fishing gear for some of the kids. Several different things are going on for the kids. We've got a pellet gun range. Break down the barrel here. See a little V-notch. An archery range. Okay, volunteering today for the kids, kids Fishing Day here at the Pocket Park. It used to be up in um, Camp 7 there for quite a few years, and this year at the Pocket Park here, all kinds of stuff going on, but it's a good time. Kids from 6 years old to 16, and everybody's having a good time. So we're glad to be here to help out. The Forest Service uh, let us know in January that they weren't going to be able to host the event with us. Um, Kids Fishing Day has been at Camp 7 for 28 years and uh, we we're hoping to hold it there again. Uh, but they told us they were concerned about COVID and that they had uh, inadequate staffing to hold the event there. So we went shopping around looking for alternatives. And of course, we were familiar with the Pocket Park here. There's a beautiful facility. And um, we talked to the DNR staff and they said, we'd love to have you here. So, um, so we've been working with them closely. We are so grateful to them. Uh, Joanne and Christy have been wonderful to work with. Um, and had the DNR not been interested in working with us, uh, there would be no Kids Fishing Day today. So we're real grateful to the DNR and the staff for having us here. There is a bunch of activities here. There's trapping, there's uh, pelagons, archery. archery, there's a fish pond. Fishing pond. And it's just been a great time out here today. And busy. Really busy. Yeah. We have face coloring and face painting. Um, we have different conservation officers throughout the uh, park handing out prizes. Uh, we have a fur kit so the, the kids can get educated on uh, furs and uh, different scat that they may lay. So I usually work Elder County, but I'm working the fur exhibit at the Pocket Park. I'm here teaching kids about furs and the different types of scats that different animals put down in the woods so they can better identify animals and what might be in the woods that they don't see. Yep, you can go ahead and touch them. Nope, I can't give them to you. <laughs> During fair week, uh, the Pocket Park is actually one of the free events that you can do at the fair. And we operate strictly on community volunteers. So if anybody is looking for a volunteer opportunity, Fair Week is where we will need you. Uh, it's your ticket into the fair for free. We give you lunch 
and what a better place to be than during fair week. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.